Thanks for watching Channel 7. Live across WA from the studios of 7 Perth, Susanna Carr. Tonight. She's <laughs> fine. They're fine. <laughs> Fine. Safe and well, the toddlers who spent a night lost in the bush. You lost your mummy, you did. Gone for 25 hours, the two-year-olds who survived on their own. And Chris Judd reported for eye gouging, facing a one-week ban. You're watching 7 News. Good evening and welcome to 7 News. Two toddlers who spent a night missing in the bush have been found alive. They're resting in Bustleton Hospital tonight. Rick Arden is there. Rick, good evening. It's wonderful news. Yes, Sue, isn't it? It's the best possible news after hours of heartache. Two-year-olds Trista Foley and Dakota Vincent were found after 25 hours of frantic searching. It was an emotional and uplifting moment and Gary Adshead was there. Here's his report. She's fine. They're fine. They're both fine. <laughs> it was one of those miraculous moments. Two toddlers reunited with their frantic parents after more than 25 hours in the wilderness. That look good. How are you? You caused all this? Oh. You lost your mummy, you did. Two and a half year old Dakota and Trista, almost three, had beaten the odds, grubby faced but otherwise unharmed, after surviving a day and night in rain soaked and freezing coastal terrain south of Yellingup. Thank you for everybody for finding me. Can you say that? Winemakers Graham and Marilyn Hutton were the children's saviours. The reunion captured live on Channel 7. We're, we're live on Channel 7. Did you find these kids? Yes, I did. And they were in the bush? They were in the coastal scrub overlooking the mouth of the Willyabra Creek, but um, very close, high land, but above the ocean. The couple took seven news to the spot where the toddlers were found. Well, being low and in that scrub, they would have been um, quite warm and away from the wind. It's more than three kilometres from the house where they wandered from at 10.30am yesterday. A pair of sneakers and tiny clearing among the bushes mark the spot where Dakota and Trista spent the night huddled together. Rugged cliffs just metres away. Before the midday elation, there were grave fears for the children. More than 200 police, firefighters, SES and community volunteers had come to help the search. I come from Muslim. Okay. I brought my wife and daughter down there looking for them. As it unfolded, Trista's desperate father flew from Melbourne and waited for his daughter at Busseldon Hospital. First, Trista arrived at the hospital with her mother, followed by Dakota. Both children rushed in for medical examinations. The two toddlers side by side in hospital, showing little sign of their 25-hour ordeal. The injury that she has sustained is a tick on her ear. Yeah, she has a tick that's on her ear and that's it. While Trista was regaining her strength with a banana, Little Dakota was catching up on some sleep. I am just going to grab hold of her and tie a rope around her waist and never let her go again. Not until she's 34. At just two years old, authorities can only guess how these toddlers survived. The real story of their 25-hour adventure destined to remain a mystery. How they did it, I don't know. It's one of those miracle stories I should make a movie about. She's <laughs> fine. Gary Adshead, 7 News. Well, as you can see, even though Dakota and Trista are in hospital, they're physically fine. Medical staff just want to keep an eye on them overnight, and so do their parents, who are so happy to have them back. They've agreed to come out and join us live on 7 News now. And first of all, we've got Neil and Emma, the parents over here, and also Deanne and Daniel, the parents over here of Trista. Now, can I ask you first, Deanne, what was going through your mind when the bubs were missing? Um, fear. Yeah. Just utter fear. Worst worst case scenario you know I mean you've got to look at reality and in the conditions we were in it just it was really hard to keep hope up really and Neil and Emma can I ask you did you ever fear the worst we did well I did we were we were fearing it it was cold and rather wet so we just had to keep our fingers crossed knowing that we we're gonna have a full-scale search today and can I ask you Deanne too do you think the children had any idea what they were going through um to be honest no, like I think in a sense, yeah, they were frightened and they wanted mummy and daddy. Um, but I think obviously from what we've seen today, they've obviously, um, they've done well. In the conditions they were in, they've done well. And Trista, we're just going to ask you, bub, you happy mum, you're back with mum and dad? 
<laughs> <laughs> and uh, the same with Dakota over there. Dakota, you happy you're back with Mum and Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. So it's just a, a wonderful finish. We're so glad that everything turned out well. And, Deanne, you particularly wanted to say thank you to the rescuers. Yeah, we just, on behalf of all of us, we just want to thank the SES crew, um, the police, the fireys, the hundreds of volunteers that, that have just helped us find our kids. It's just fantastic. Thanks, guys. Mammoth effort. Yeah. And are you just amazed that the, the children were so well after all they went through? Yeah, they dug themselves were. a little nest. They were real little heroes. And you were talking about, Neil, perhaps the SAS rewriting their uh, survival book. Yes, yes, <laughs> there was someone who said that, bearing in mind these two uh, with zero training managed to survive the night yeah. in a lousy night. Well, it's just wonderful news. Thank you so much for joining us. Just so a fantastic finish to a, a frantic day along, an emotional day for the moment from outside the bustle of the hospital live on 7 News. It's back to you. Thanks, Rick, and it couldn't be better. Air crash investigators say it could take weeks, even months, to find the cause of a plane...